Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over a thousand posts, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. Also, an entire line of medical kits and supplies. The risk of infection exists anytime a violent encounter occurs between animal and human. Diseases like rabies and tetanus are still occasionally seen in the U.S., and certain types of animals can transmit other diseases as well. These may cause them to be sick and irritable, leading them to bite. Other disease-causing organisms, also known as pathogens, use the animal as a vector, that is, a carrier that remains healthy but can pass the microbe to humans. Bite wounds are notorious for causing infections. Bacteria exist, lots of them, in the mouths of animals. They may be native to the animal or may come from prey that has been recently eaten. Occasionally, bacteria from soil, feces, or the victim's own skin may actually infect the wound. Our latest book, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, discusses bacterial infections and veterinary antibiotics. Bacterial infections that can be transmitted through animal bites include cat scratch fever, rat bite fever, staph, strep, tetanus, and tularemia. The issue that concerns most public health officials, however, is a virus. That is rabies. Rabies is caused by members of the lysivirus family. The disease is transmitted when an infected animal scratches or bites another animal or human. Splatter, especially from saliva, can spread infection if it gets into the eyes, mouth, or nose of somebody nearby. Globally, dogs are the most common domestic animal to have the disease, accounting for more than 99% in many countries. In the Americas, however, wildlife is more likely to give you rabies. Bat and raccoon bites are the most common source of rabies infections in the United States. Less than 5% of cases are actually from dogs. Rodents are often blamed, but they're very rarely infected with rabies. Reptiles and other non-mammals don't contract the disease at all. You won't get rabies from a snake bite. The period between infection and the first symptoms, we call that the incubation period, is typically about one to three months in humans, but can be much longer. This, along with a death rate of over 100% if untreated, is the reason why humans suspected of being exposed are given a series of vaccinations and antibody injections as soon as possible. Symptoms usually begin as a fever and a headache, but the, as the illness progresses, it affects the nervous system, causing paralysis in many cases. Rabies causes significant alterations in mental status, and causes confusion, agitation, anxiety, paranoia, hallucination sometimes. Generally, the victim is delirious. One unusual sign of rabies is hydrophobia, the fear of water. Because of difficulty swallowing despite severe thirst, water seems to cause panic in those people that are infected. It's at this point the victims produce a large amount of saliva, making them appear to foam at the mouth. There's no curative treatment. Death usually occurs if this has reached this point within a few days after symptoms appear. The good news is that rabies is very rare in the United States. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, states that if you were bitten by a healthy cat, dog, or ferret in the United States, it's acceptable for the owner to observe the animal in quarantine for signs of infection. The animal should be sequestered for 10 full days. If no evidence of suspicious physical effects or abnormal behavior occurs, anti-rabies preventative treatment is not required. No U.S. citizen has ever contracted rabies from a dog, cat, or ferret that has remained healthy in quarantine for that period of time. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Begin your journey to medical preparedness with the Survival Medicine Handbook, the essential guide for when medical help is not on the way. Now in its 700 page third edition, plus our new book, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, The Layman's Guide to Available Antibacterials in Austere Settings. And last but not least, by checking out Nurse Amy's medical kits and individual supplies at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. Dot net. You'll be glad you did.